in this part of the discussion of legislation and the legislative role of Congress, we just want to make an observation that our textbook does a really good job of, of pointing out, and so you can take as well, is the idea of divided government. Divided government is a very is an outgrowth of the idea of separation. The possibility that part of one branch or the entire branch is controlled by one party and the other branch is controlled by the other. So we've had a number of examples of that quite recently and we have enough experience with those to get a sense of whether divided government is a good thing or a bad thing to use the John, uh, John Stewart argument about what CNN is talking about. Um, and this again is in the eye of the beholder. If you like the legislation that Congress is passing, it is a bad thing if Congress can't pass legislation. But if you think the legislation that's being proposed is absolutely terrible, then it is a good thing that they can't do anything. But what we have seen is that there have been periods of time where the House and the Senate and the executive branch are controlled by Democrats. And that was during 2008 to 2010. It was a fairly small period of time. Early on in President Obama's, Obama's term, he was the President of the United States as a Democrat, and the majority of the House and the majority of the Senate were Democrats. And therefore, legislation that was passed by a democratically controlled House and Senate would be likely to be signed by a President of the United States who was also a Democrat. And you did see some major pieces of legislation that came out. You had Obamacare came out during that period. The um, health care law um, was talking about wanting to run on um, during the campaign. You also saw the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act was, was put um, that was trying to deal with some of the dangers and the problems that people thought created the Great Recession starting in 2008. Um, but big pieces of legislation were actually able to pass. There were other things that didn't pass and or wasn't even considered. So some argued and some criticized that there wasn't an attempt to deal with immigration reform during that small window of time. But there is only a certain period of time and amount of time available to discuss something major like the health care law of Obamacare just took a lot of energy for the government to be able to do that. And so the number of pieces of legislation that could be passed during that period is, is relatively small, but the changes can be quite big. Um, but then you had a, a period of divided government from 2010 to 2016 and the 2000 election. In part, Republicans were able to whip up um, huge opposition to Obamacare that was passed only by Democratic votes. No Republicans voted in favor of, of, of Obamacare. It was talked about as being a partisan bill. It was Democrats' idea and the ways in which Obamacare may not have actually dealt with the health care issues that people wanted it to or were afraid that it wouldn't. Um, led in part, in large part, to Republicans winning a large number of seats in the 2010 midterm elections and taking over both the House and the Senate and having a majority in the House and Senate as Republicans. And so from 2010 until 2016, it was divided government. The Republicans controlled Congress, both houses of Congress, and you had a Democratic president. And despite the fact that the House and the Senate were controlled by Republicans, Republicans weren't able to win the presidency in 2012 with Mitt Romney as the candidate. Um, and so you had divided government that went on for quite a while. And what we saw with that is nothing substantive passed out of the House and the Senate. No major pieces of legislation were passed. Furthermore, um, government shutdowns happened. Uh, judicial nominees that were put forward by Obama most obviously by Merrick Garland, who was to replace a, a conservative Antonin Scalia that would have changed the balance from a five to four conservative majority to a five to four more progressive or liberal majority on the U.S. Supreme Court, was just ignored by the U.S. Senate. They refused to confirm nominees um, to the entire judicial branch, including the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and so you had a lot of stalemates, you had a lot of um, shutdowns, actually government shutdowns, where the Republicans wanted one thing and, and the Democrats wanted something differently, and they, the government shut down a number of times. Um, so in that sense, uh, divided government was one that led to perhaps not the, anything passing in, in some, depending on where you sit on, on that issue, whether that is a good thing or, or a bad thing, but it is certainly the case that legislation really wasn't able to pass and just obstruction, uh, obstructionism was really the name of the game. We had unified government for two years. President Trump was a Republican, and the Republicans held on to the majority in 2016, a majority of the House and a majority of the Senate. So from 2016 to 2018, the Republicans controlled um, the process of making the laws. 
Um, but even then, they uh, weren't able to get everything done that they wanted to. They did pass the uh, major uh, legislation in terms of the tax overhaul, the tax cuts for the wealthy. They were able to give tax cuts to corporations they were able to give. Um, that is for Republicans. Um, and they were able to do that because they controlled the House, the Senate, and they had uh, the president. But at the same time, they weren't able to pass immigration reform. They weren't able to repeal Obamacare, even though they had talked about doing it. Um, it failed by just one vote in pass, and Obamacare is the law of the land. Um, so there are ways in which even with unified government, the government doesn't necessarily uh, complete its jobs, in part because members of the House of Representatives in the U.S. Senate might have a different priority than what the president has. The Republicans in the House and the Senate might have a different calculation than what a Republican in the White House has, and similar with Democrats. Um, now we have divided government because in 2018, the House of Representatives went to the Democrats. The U.S. Senate stayed with Republicans. The president is still uh, a Republican, and so we have divided government. It seems unlikely that we're going to have any legislation that has passed. There was some discussion that infrastructure was something that Democrats and Republicans could agree on, in large part because infrastructure spending is a really great way of delivering goodies to districts. So the House of Representatives is very excited about those to deliver goodies in the U.S. Senate. And so in that sense, there is some room for maneuverability where you could pass this legislation if you're willing to spend a considerable amount of money to do upgrades of roads, to do upgrades of dams, to come up with levees and things like that. And there certainly is a, a crumbling infrastructure that there is a need to rebuild a bunch of things. I'd love to have some of the fiscal federalism come through where the federal government would start to provide money for these things, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be going forward, but there was at least that potential. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't seem like there's much legislation that really will pass because anything that passes the House by the Democrats who control the House basically ignore and vice versa. And so it really becomes hard to see there's much legislation. Because the U.S. Senate is still controlled by Republicans, the nomination of conservative judges that started under the unified Republicans um, continues. So from 2016 until now, the judicial branch is being packed with a bunch of nominees that are favorable to Republicans. Um, so that work is being done. Um, so the other thing that is happening is the oversight role of Congress, the ability of Congress to hold the executive branch accountable for what it's doing or not doing is now being done only by the House of Representatives. And so the House of Representatives is having representatives and, and heads of agencies and departments from the executive branch coming in and explaining what's going on. Um, but in terms of legislation, it seems very unlikely that anything is going to happen. And so this idea that we have legislative supremacy, what happens if you have legislative supremacy which is the engine of our political system, when in fact the system of divided government makes it so it's very hard for Congress to do its job because of the separation of powers and checks and balances.